Right, what was I? I was working on uh, some stuff related to murder, I think. Particularly DLL logic. I'm going to take a look in here. Have these been added? Okay, yes, they have. Then I suppose what I should do, I think I can clear this out. Uh, I should have it there anyways. There we go. So the idea is, if this is null, then I'll load the map data buffer from above uh, and use that value. Otherwise, I will use the value that is, uh, that is here, since it is not null. I also have to send stimuli messages. I think I'm going to do this in a similar fashion. You know what? I know what I said here. I'm going, uh, what I said earlier. But I think I'm going to add x and y positions that are not relative. Five, two, seven, then eight, two, a. Right. 
then we have three UN dates. All right, I'm gonna move this around so this first. That means. Uh, it's again this that I'm working with. Right, so because I am going to be sending all of the map data, I suppose it's uh, important to send the x and y position. Especially because I have thought about it later, and if I don't, then the uh, the murderer is simply guessing at uh, how long the time has passed. I don't think that this would be important, but I will keep it there. Okay. So we have ID, attack, cooldown, and speed. You know what, I'm not going to abbreviate this. Hold on, did I? Okay, yeah. You know what? I'm going to make a prefix based off of what is being modified. I know it may seem a little silly because these are things only uh, you don't add collision for stimuli or anything but I don't know I feel like I would want to have this simply because I don't want to have uh, weird confusion on clear Particularly, if I say map data clear, then I'm going to want to have the rest of the function say map data. And I will need map data clear because I'm going to also need uh, stimuli clear. Which also indicates that I'm going to be uh, 
doing this. Can I make sure that these signatures are correct? I'll make sure later. I'll make a note of it. There we go. I am absolutely certain that I will not miss this. Because I've pasted it a bunch of times. Alright. I'm sure if I don't look in this file, this, this is just going to stick in uh, until eventually eventually someone is like you know what i'm going to go ahead and uh see what this was all about when he was streaming and then he's gonna be like wait a minute did he ever get rid of that message and then they're gonna like say hey uh did you ever get rid of that message and i was like i didn't even check i didn't even check I know how this is going to end up for me. Yeah, so for the first message related to self, this is a message type zero zero zero. I have I'm going to change this. Because I typically like to reserve the value of 0, 0, 0 for do nothing. And the value, uh, do nothing or this is a terminator. So, I want to do what I do here. I like how even this looks. Just very nice and aligned. I know plus zero is pointless, but it still looks very even.
There we go. I realized that that would have been an error. I was like, wait, hold on, why did I have to insert a space here, but not here? And then I realized, wait a minute, these two, uh, two symbols shouldn't be here. Right, so then we have uh, u into e d. Sorry, I thought I was about to sneeze. It wasn't quite the full wind up, it was just a little uh a little wind up. If that makes any sense. Or if anyone even cares. And here we break the complete uniformity. I have to make a double digit number. I could probably do this in hex and then get away with all the way up to 255. As much as I want to do that, I'm going to uh, I'm going to stay the. What is this? Okay, that's why it's messed up. This wasn't messed up. This was. I thought that this one was. In any case. So we want ID. ID. Is ID before everything? Okay, yeah. Alright, and then we want to modify this check, and Okay, okay. I am ever going to wonder how to do the uh, equals plus or plus equal. Okay, so I've probably been getting it wrong my entire life. Because I've been doing equals plus, and that's apparently just uh, saying that it's equal. <clears throat> hmm. I am mad that it is this way, but uh, whatever. Right. Before I forget. I want to uh, make sure that I do the clear function. Right, so 
the next message would be a player, as in a player within visible range. And uh, we have X, Y, and ID. I think I I think what I'm going to do for this entire thing is no relative positions. I know what I said before, but no relative positions. And I think I can literally get rid of uh, message type three, since in theory you should already know what room you're in based off of positioning all. So, X, Y, and ID. That is much shorter, and I think we can just. Uh, go right so the idea that I'm having is that uh, a murderer should be by itself in, uh, all oh, right, I had this, wow, I am not going to remember this, in any case, I, uh, I want there to be only one, uh, one murderer at a time for any uh, any function called to uh, to like murderer stimuli or whatever. How do they call it? I really should not have these in here. Uh, I think about it. These need to go up here, where they're going to be identified as uh, functions for the entirety of the program. I was not thinking when I was writing this, was I? I was like, oh yeah, you can just uh, define it here, and all of these functions down here should have it. Like, like an idiot. Like the idiot I am. Oh wait, hold on. One more thing. I know that was pointless because again I'm probably going to forget that exists like I just did but okay so this is this is uh, something I could probably use the same signature for actually So I think what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to, when I make a sound for you, I'm going to specify a few things. I'm going to specify uh, whether or not the uh, the sound for should be Uh, should be processed by the murderer. For sounds that are closer to diegetic, that is, they actually do happen in the uh, the map. 
or at least that are theoretically diegetic, despite the fact that they might be technically inconsistent. Uh, I'm going to have a flag that says, hey, process me, as a, as a sound that the murderer can hear. And then I'm going to go ahead and determine if it's close enough to the murderer for them to hear it. And if, uh, if so, then I will go ahead and say, All right, this is a sound, and uh, you did not cause this. I think loudness might be a pointless thing, because like, you could determine how loud it was theoretically based off of distance. I realize that if I'm going to be adding a bunch of uh, stuff for uh, a player written AI to be used, I'm also going to have to add uh, the ability to test it out. to update this. I think we have about 30 minutes left. Slightly more than that, but... Wait, was that paused? Okay, I thought for a second it was paused. I was like, wait a minute, did I pause it at some point? What, did I even do that? And then no, it ticked down and I'm like, okay, so I'm not insane. I'm not insane by this particular event, uh, particular event. Right, so we have uh, loudness and x and y position. We also need to update these because I keep forgetting that. Is it two? Right, and current room, I, I don't think I'm going to do this. I am wondering if I should do a uh, collision. Again, you should be able to tell that you're colliding against something based off of uh, the map that you're given. But, mm, I don't know. And if I am going to add a sound event, uh, for murder AI consideration, then I'm also going to have to do that for my own uh, AI. Let me just add these. Uh... I did not return from this. Like some sort of barbarian, I just didn't return. All right, now now that I have added the return statement, I think we're all good. I was like, oh wait, hold on. The return type should be uh, void, right? Because I, like, there's nothing that can necessarily go wrong, correct? And then I was like, oh, okay, let me go check, because, or I was like, yeah, okay. And then I looked down here, and I'm like, wait, that's a bull. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then I saw the lack of return and was appalled.
Why did I just add that? It's... Okay. This. This need be added. So I think what I'm going to do for my own uh, internal AI, or logic A, as I have lovingly referred to it as, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have it chase the loudest sound. That is the sound that is close, uh, closest by. Because a sound void, uh, a sound void isn't going to stick around. It's going to be there for like a frame, and then it's going to disappear. You know what? Just because I want to prevent compilation. Should immediately give me some errors. Should immediately. Why isn't it giving me an error? Okay. So I think dead idle, roaming, uh, roam state, timed idle, and look around should all be affected by uh, chase shouldn't. Because you're already going after someone, a definite target, whereas a sound event is not a definite target. So for this, I guess technically I can write this however I want, and I could just have the murderer always know what the player is, but I feel like that's not very fair. So I will write this to filter out sounds that are further away. And, uh, Actually, yeah, I will go ahead and have a wait. But before that. to add a voltage. I don't know what I want the range to be. But I am also going to have to modify things here. Like, does uh, I'm gonna have to add X and Y positions. So interacting with stuff sometimes causes sounds. I don't think I'm going to do that for the police officer. Uh, but for the weapon, when you collect it, I will. 
The reason why I wouldn't do that for the police officer is because usually I I see the police officer being placed in a foyer, which is an area that a murderer cannot go. Let's see. So I'm going to place the uh, sound effect at the character, so I can just use its x, y values. Right, keys, uh, keys, search object, doors, I'm going to have uh, things there. Oh, yes, it's disconnected. Just uh, waiting on a reconnection. Come on, OBS. Uh, we were there for a second? I don't know. But it increased the delay by a lot. Oh, oh we're back. I'm going to wait for the uh, stream to appear on my phone. So far, it's giving me a spinning circle. Should be any second now, though. Just uh, tapping on my desk, waiting for the stream to show up. I'm going to try reloading it. Oh, I think we're good. All right. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to place the sound foil at the flip. That way it's just uh, easy for... Okay, I did that here. Did I... Is this under the... Right, I still have to do that here. 
Don't don't I have a sound for you here? Okay, here. Here we are. I didn't see this. Actually, I think I should use the draft this position. Which just sets an opener. Uh, five. Does this? Uh, okay, it does have a sound point. Means. I really should have this slinger. In fact, it might be necessary for me to put it out here, like uh, the networking code is. Like a right here. I imagine would be the optimal position. Whereas its current uh, current position and execution isn't exactly the best. Right, where are I going? Uh, Object specific interactions. That's why I had caps lock on it. I was like, whoa, I, I held down shift when pressing this E. Why isn't it capital? So this should now, at least in general, be spawned at the player or where the sound is happening. I might have forgotten something. Actually, I did forget something. Despite the fact that uh, this isn't going to be a used sound, I am still going to go ahead and make sure that this is placed.
Do I have something in here? Yes, yes, I do. I think that's that's it. And why is it compiling? I have this very incorrect code here. Right, so I have to I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the position of closest sound within uh... and I think I also want this to be slightly unpredictable so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to identify So it only has a few states that it works in. I know it's stateless code is the uh, group, but technically this doesn't belong to a state, it just belongs outside of other states. If we're not in state four or five, that means that we are free to investigate. Because I want to have some code in five that uh, does something, uh, something particular. All right, so the first thing we need to do is From this, I want to pick a random <clears throat> This will give me a uh, random object that has this set to one. And that means I have to go back here and identify all cases where I need to set this. Murder process or a murderer process? Murderer process. And since we need to set this to a value of one, we'll set it to a value of one. Wait, hold on. But this is the wrong place to set it to a value of one. 
we need to set it to a value of 1 when we want the murderer to pay attention. Which means uh, not, not here. Or, yeah, not here. Okay, so these are not uh, not diegetic. Oh wait, no, this this one is. What does grab weapon demer sound like? Do I just not have anything for it? Alright, I suppose that's fair. Grab weapon has a uh, murder process flag set to one and Weapon that's not diagetic. Get bag. This could be a, re a theoretically be found anywhere, so I'm declaring it diagetic. Or at least uh, murder processable, which usually means it's diagetic. Finding the victim, uh, non diegetic, if I remember correctly. But I also need I do this here too. Okay. I think that's most everything. Yeah, these don't have uh, sound voids associated, so the oinking things is not something that will cause trouble, except with the law. But that's not implemented, and I don't think I ever want to implement that. Alright. 
So now that we have murder process of sound point to one in certain cases, we can now use that value to, to determine uh, what sounds we should be listening for. Sorry, I'm just uh, stretching around a little bit. How much time do we have left? Five minutes. Fair enough. Uh, so then we have, <clears throat> we need to go ahead and identify its X and Y position. Uh, actually we should uh, identify its X and Y position prior to uh, picking one at random. Because we want it to be murder processable and also within earshot of murder. I'm just going to use this since that means I don't have to do any finicky weirdness. Right, I was right there. Right, what should I go with? So 128 is the length of a character. Well, I'm gonna, let's see. So I'm trying to visualize it in my head. Uh, the length of a murderer would be 128 from its uh, top right corner, which isn't exactly what I want, uh, want but I suppose if I really want to spend the time uh, making this better, I can do this in a later update. So, uh, that or I can do this later. Uh, so 128 is the width of, a, of one murder, and also all the characters. Under, a technic uh, under technicality, their sprites are 128 pixels long even though they are, are represented by only a color change potentially every 32 or every four pixels, with the exception of the murderer that I decided doesn't follow this rule. That is, uh, every everything in the game is typically having pixels four by four, with the exception of the murder crew. They're just different. Right, so 128, then that would be, you would basically have to be already in the murderer's vision. 256, and you could technically make a sound that close to a murderer, but I feel like, I feel like you're tempting fate already. Uh, 512, this is a small distance away, and I think 1024 would actually be, uh, would be justifiable. So, I decided it was going to be random sound, so we want to store their position. Uh, 
Okay, come on. Uh, They should uh, have the variables set. And also, they should have their state updated. Actually, I'm going to put this here uh, simply because there must at least be one at this point. And this just goes ahead and picks a random out of all of their hits, which, if there's only one, means it's going to pick that one. If I know anything about uh about this environment that I work within. Wait, hold on. Oh. Alright. Well uh I guess that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you if you were watching. Thank you if you're watching later on YouTube. It's going to be it for me. So until I see you again, this is goodbye.